My very first encounter with hope happened 36 years ago. I could still vividly remember the very first time I said yes to the invitation ng mga makukulit to attend the worship service. So pagdating ko doon, I was wearing a blue jeans, tight blue jeans. Tapos when I saw the community, kakaunting tao yon. Pero when they were singing, they were really rejoicing. Grabe, I looked at them as weird. Mga weirdong mga tao. But honestly, when I was observing them, I felt something from within. Na yung feeling na yon, hindi ko alam, nagdulot sa akin ng kakaibang klase ng inner peace. Na at that time, parang kailangan, kailangan ko. So I was looking forward to the next Sunday, the next Sunday, and the next Sunday until hanggang sa mga panahong ito. So, nung pagkatapos ng service na yon, I think it was after two weeks that I started serving in the children's ministry. And then another two weeks, and they gave me the opportunity to share in a Bible study for the youth, and then eventually, adults na. So, ang nakita ko po doon, my first encounter with Jesus brought me hope. And that hope, I cannot contain to myself that I was able to share it with other people. This message po is entitled, Encounter with Hope. If you would want to have that experience to start now or to continue from this day forth, I'm inviting you to please pray with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that this may be the first time that most of our friends will be having an encounter with you. Dalangin ko po ang pag-asa na dumalay sa kanila from your heart to theirs. At dun po sa mga dati na po naming nakakasama, panibagong klase ng pag-asa ang matatanggap nila. And may they be able to listen to your audible voice na magsasabi kung ano ang mga gusto mong sabihin para sa direksyon na tatahakin po nila. Basbasan niyo po ang lahat sa amin in this day of our worship before you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Encounter with hope. And this is the catch of our message. Real worship brings real hope that we cannot contain it but share to others. Na ang totoong pagsamba ay nagbibigay ng totoong pag-asa. At yung pag-asang yun ay hindi lamang para sa atin kung hindi para na rin ibahagi sa iba. Tingnan po natin yung isang kwento sa buhay ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo in John chapter 4 verses 20 to 26. And it says there, Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. But you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Isang babaeng Samaritan po yon. But Jesus said to that Samaritan, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. Take note of that word. We worship what we know. For salvation is for the Jews. But the hour is coming. And is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father. Take note of that word again. Kanina, no. Ngayon, Father. In spirit, another word. And in truth. The Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit. And those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. So it was mentioned again. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us many things. And Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Grabe, there was an encounter with Jesus himself, who is hope himself. And ito pong babaeng ito na naka-encounter sa Panginoon, he, she did not just contain the hope to herself. Look at John chapter 4, verse 39. Many Samaritans 
from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. Today, let us talk about what is hopeful worship. It's not just about a playlist of songs. It is not even about this thing that you are watching right now. Worship is more than that. And worship has different kinds of effects. And today I want to discuss with you what is hopeful worship. Ano nga ba yung pagsambang merong kasamang pag-asa? Tatlong bagay po. Worship is relationship. Ang pagsamba ay isang relasyon. Worship is work. Ang pagsamba ay isang bokasyon. And worship is mission. Ang pagsamba ay isang pagmimisyon. Pag-usapan po natin ang tatlong bagay na yan. So, kanina po I told you to zero in on the words no, Father, Spirit, and Truth. Sabi po yan sa John chapter 4 verses 22 to 23. Sabi ni Jesus sa kanila, Kayo, sumasamba kayo sa isang Diyos na hindi nyo kailala. Pero darating ang araw na sasambahin ninyo ang Ama sa Spirito at sa Katotohanan. Worship is relationship. Sabihin natin lahat, ang pagsamba ay isang relasyon. The starting point of worship is having an intimate relationship with the Father. Yan po yung sinabi ni Jesus eh. The Father is looking. So in other words, you cannot really worship until you experience that intimacy with the Lord. Na kinakailangan kilala mo ang Diyos or yung starting point na kinikilala mo na hindi ikaw ang Diyos, na merong isang Diyos at habang lalo-lalo lalong lumalalim ang iyong pagkakakilala sa Kanya, lumalalim at lumalalim rin ang iyong karanasan ng pagsamba. Worship is also a balanced expression of our love and gratitude to God. Balance. Kasi sinabi ni Jesus, worship in spirit and in truth. Malalim na usapan to pero simplihan lang po natin. Though when we say we worship, it is an expression. Ikaw ito, ayan ang Diyos, nagpapasalamat ka sa Kanya kung kaya't ikaw ay nag express ng pasasalamat mo na yon. Pero yung expression na yon should be balanced. It should be in spirit. So there is this work inside of us na yun yung sinasabi ko kanina sa kwento na there's this inner peace that I cannot explain. Yun pala, yung spirit ko at yung spirit ng Panginoon naguugnay. Whenever I, I sang those songs way back then, So that is worshiping in spirit. And it is worshiping in truth. Kasi pwedeng, you know, yung spirit-spirit natin, eh, wala naman at hindi nakasandig sa sinasabi ng Biblia. Dapat, alam din natin yung nangyayari. Oo, nararamdaman natin, but at the same time, we know. So that is worshiping in spirit and in truth. And don't forget the two elements, that love and gratitude na kaya ka sumasamba at ine-express mo yon ang isang expression ay pag-awit, ay dahil mahal mo siya at dahil nagpapasalamat tayo sa Kanya. God designed our worship to be done together with a community. Saan nga ba dapat sumamba? Sa totoo, pwede ka naman talagang sumamba mag-isa. Pero... Sa Biblia po, God designed that worship to be a corporate one. Yung nagsasama-sama lahat na nagpapasalamat, yung nagsasama-sama lahat na nagmamahal sa Diyos, at sama-sama tayong nagtataas ng ating mga awit at papuri sa Kanya. Yun na lang sa pagkakataong ito na may ganitong mga quarantine protocols, um, worshiping online could be a second best worship Iba pa rin talaga yung nag-gather together. Narating po tayo dyan once the situation becomes better. 
Pero ganun pa man, kahit naka-online tayo, what is important is the matter of the heart. May mga mahal tayo sa buhay na hindi man natin nakakasama physically now. But salamat sa Zoom, salamat sa Messenger, nakaka- nararamdaman natin yung relationship na strong pa rin kahit online. So, ganun din sa ating worship service, di ba? Kahit online lang po ito, pansamantala, eh, yung relationship ay malapit at malapit pa rin. Ngayon, kapag tayo po ay sumasamba because worship is relationship, sana naman todo bigay. Let's be all in during worship. Yung pag talagang nag-worship, we say no to all distractions. Pag talagang nag-worship, we give our very, very best. Yung todo na. Kasi bakit? Kasi si Jesus binigay niya lahat. Tayo pa kaya na mahal na mahal natin siya, alam ko naman, mahal mo siya, di ba? Ibigay din natin yung oras. Bigay natin yung ating lakas. Bigay natin yung ating isip at puso sa pagpupuri at pagpapasalamat sa Kanya. Pero ganun pa man, dahil naka-online tayo, baka po maaari. Kung gusto mo talaga na maramdaman yung, yung hopeful worship, Baka pwede maligo na bago mag-worship service. Baka pwede nakakain na bago mag-online worship service. At walang mga distractions. Talagang yung one hour or so, solid po talaga that Lord, I want this time of worship to be an intimate relationship with you. Once again, I said, be all out. Mas mahirap ang distraction ngayon, pero pag nalampasan natin yon grabe, Mararamdaman talaga ng Panginoon na love, na love po natin siya. Job chapter 36 verses 15 to 16. Hard times and trouble are God's way of getting our attention. Wow! And at this very moment, God deeply desires you to lead you from trouble and to spread your table with your favorite food. Grabe! Hard times, trouble, pero yun pala ang way ng Panginoon to get our attention. Job here was, was experiencing that trouble, pero dahil ama niya, ang ating Diyos Ama, nandun pa rin ang pagsamba niya kahit hindi maganda ang kanyang nararamdaman. Instead of suppressing our emotions, express them to God as He will help us go through through them. Ang tawag po doon is trust. Job, because he was growing in his relationship with God through worship, trusted God more and more. Ang ganda nga ng sinabi niya eh, na yung trouble na meron ka, papalitan ng Panginoon yun into a table with your favorite food. In short, We will benefit from all these troubles because we will know God better and better and better. Brothers and sisters, worship is relationship. Kamusta po ang ating pagsamba? At yan ay refleksyon ng kamusta po ang ating intimacy sa ating Panginoon. Second part is that of Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Totoo ba na ang pagsamba ay sa church lang? Ang pagsamba ba lang ay pag nagsasama-sama lang every Sunday? Ang sabi po sa Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or in other translation, which is your reasonable worship. Verse 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Second, what is hopeful worship? Worship is not just relationship, but worship is work. Sabihin nga po ng lahat, worship is work. 
Ang pagsamba ay isang bokasyon. Wow, ang lalim ng salita, bokasyon. Pero essentially what this is, is what is this verse telling us is that ang pagsamba ay hindi limitado sa pagkanta. There are thousands of ways for us to express our worship aside from music. Akala ko noon, pag sinabing worship, dalawang fast, dalawang song, okay na yon. Pero ang worship kasi is not just that. It's beyond that. It's your lifestyle. It's what we are doing every day. Sabi ni Paul, offer your bodies. In short, what we do with our bodies every day in work, in studying, in, in our house, everything that we do could be a form of worship as long as we're doing it for the name and for the honor of God. Worship is not just about expression, but it is also about formation. Ang akala po kasi natin, ang worship tayo. Ako kumakanta, ako nagbibigay, ako nagsaserve. Worship is not just that. Alam mo po ba na kapag ikaw ay nag-worship, hindi lang ikaw ang gumagalaw, ang Diyos din ang gumagalaw. Bakit? Because He's trying to form our hearts. He's trying to form our minds every time we worship Him. Paano? Simple po. Sa simpleng pagtaas ng kamay. ba? Diba? It is very engaging na ang hirap kaya magtaas ng kamay. Kakahiya kaya. Pero kapag tinaas mo, God is moving in your heart this something which is called humility and surrender. Na kapag ikaw ay nag-communion, kinain mo yung tinapay, ininom mo yung, yung cup, yung drink. ba? Diba? That is also engaging. There is this action. Pero alam mo na pag ginawa mo yun, God is also moving in your heart and reminding you of what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago. That that bread symbolizes His body. That cup symbolizes His blood. And pag ininom natin, pag kinain, nararamdaman natin siya if we did it in, in, in faith. That is what we're saying that whenever we worship, hindi lang ikaw ang gumagalaw, gumagalaw din ang ating Panginoon. Ang ating pong pagbibigay is also a form of worship, di ba? Pero kapag binigay natin yon, may kasamang kamay, may, may kasamang, you know, material possessions natin, but God is also changing our hearts na hindi ikaw ang Diyos kung hindi ako at ako ang bahala sa lahat ng iyong pangangailangan. Sabi po ni uh, John Calvin, God does not only care about our everyday work, but also the manner in which our work is done. Work is also worship. It is a vocation. Nagsasama-sama tayo tuwing linggo, pag corporate worship, pag online worship. But after we worship together, we go on our separate ways. Pero pag alis po natin, the worship continues. Papano? Kapag ginagalingan natin ang ating pag-aaral, kapag ginagalingan natin ang ating pagtatrabaho. Sabi ni John Calvin, na kapag ikaw ay sumasamba, yan ay trabaho. At kapag ikaw ay nagtatrabaho, pwede rin yan maging anyo ng pagsamba. When we work, dapat po, tandaan natin, kasi lalo po yung matagal nang nag-work kay Lord. Napaka-posible talaga nun na you're doing, you're doing the right thing. You're serving God. You're worshiping. You know, you're singing, you're dancing, you're giving, but with the wrong motive. Or, pwede naman, tama ang motive, tama naman yung ginagawa, but you rely on your own strength. That is why it cannot be completely considered as worship. So, if worship is, if our vocation is our worship, paano yun? Ang worship po, kapag yung ginawa natin yun tama, we do the right thing, with the right motive, and with the right power source. Pag ginawa natin yun, 
our work becomes a testimony. Nakikita ng lahat na ginagalingan natin yung ating trabaho. Ginagawa natin kung ano yung tama kahit sa paligid natin. Maraming mali. Ang hirap kaya ng academic integrity online. ba? Diba? Hindi naman nakikita eh. Pero, you know, we do the right thing. And of course, marami rin, you know, ang galing naman talaga pang labas eh. Pero napaka-importante po na maalala natin, ipaayos natin yung heart natin. Pwede talaga lahat magkamali. Tamang ginagawa, tama din yung motive natin. At sa lahat ng napapagod, baka lang po, tama naman ang ginagawa natin. Mahal na mahal naman natin si Lord. But we also need not forget that we also do things not independently from Him. Na kailangan yung strength ng Holy Spirit. Yung gabay ng Holy Spirit, yung dependence natin sa Kanya, that is what makes our work also a form of our worship. Paano ka nga ba mapapagod sa paggawa kung nakikikooperate ka lang naman kay Lord na Siya yung source ng lahat ng power? My favorite verse, di ba? Those who wait upon the Lord, those who worship on, on the Lord shall renew their strength. Posible kaya na kaya tayo napapagod is because we're doing it on our own strength. Number three, Acts chapter 2 verses 42 to 47. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. And that's what we're going to do later. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continually, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of the heart praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. So sa kwentong ito, araw-araw silang nag-faith group. Araw-araw silang nag-de-discipleship. At araw-araw silang nag-worship. Alam nyo po, Parang dalawang pa ako lang yan. If I have to walk with the Lord, my one leg would be used for worship. And my other leg will be used for discipleship. Kasi yung pagsamba ko kay Lord brings me hope. And I cannot just be selfish and contain that hope to myself. I also need to go and share it to others. And that is discipleship. That is why somebody said, you know, discipleship is relationship and worship is relationship. At sa mga napapagod po sa pagdi-disciple, baka lang po, ng isang dahilan, ay nakaligdaan natin na without real worship, we're just doing discipleship on our on our one leg. Mapakapagod yun. Mahirap yun. <sighs> Pero marami din. Ang galing naman talagang sumamba. Ang ganda ng mga gamit. Ang galing talaga. Naramdaman. There were signs, wonders, and miracles. But it doesn't stop there because worship is mission. Ang pagsamba ay isang pagmimisyon. Nakita niyo po yung talata kanina? After po nilang makaranas ng power ng Holy Spirit, after po nilang ma-empower ng Lord, para saan? They were sent out. They had the mission. And the Lord added daily yung nadadagdag na naliligtas doon sa kanyang church. Ano nga po ba ang mission? Kakatakot naman yan. Pupunta ba dun sa gano? Pupunta ba sa ganyan? Mission simply means doing our assignment. 
And what is that assignment from God? It's just being salt and light to the world after we have experienced Jesus himself. Jesus himself called himself light. I am the light of the world. Tinawag rin niya tayong light. Sa so, mga tweed, kung naranasan mo yung pumlakda, pero nung ikaw ay natutong magbigay ng paggalang at pagsamba sa Diyos, ay nagkaroon ng pag-asa. Hindi mo ba yun isashare sa iba? I understand the others who are sharing it, you know, watch party, um, sharing the link. Salamat po sa inyo. Pero may iba pa rin pong dating yung pe-personalin. Remember the Samaritan woman? Talagang inisa-isa niya ang friends niya. At dahil kilala siya ng mga kaibigan niya na ganito, pero ganito na siya ngayon, the transformation was a living proof na buhay ang Diyos na kanyang sinasamba. Romans chapter 6 verse 1, What shall we say then? Shall we continue to live in sin so that God's grace will increase? No, ah, meron po doon isang verse. I think it's in verse 13 that we offer our bodies as instruments of righteousness. So, I want I want you to zero in on that verse. Romans 6.13 instead. It's saying that we offer. And then dun sa last part ng verse, there was a mention of another word which is offer again. Nag-start with offering, nag-end with offering. Ano ang kaugnayan ng offering sa pagsamba? Offering ourselves to God is what worship is all about. Pero yung pag-offer mo ng sarili mo, hindi talaga mangyayari yon kung meron tatlong hadlang. At ano ito? Our ignorance of God, isa. Our desire to be God ourselves, ikalawa. And our misunderstanding of what surrender means, itong tatlo will block our total surrender to Him. Unahin natin yung unang binanggit natin is about the ignorance of God. You know, it's so hard to offer your life, you offer your work, you offer your finances, you offer your trust, your service to the God whom you do not know. Kaya yung mga nagsaserve kay Lord, I, I, I know that the reason why you're serving God kahit mahirap, even if it's not convenient, is because you love God, is because you have grown in trusting Him. Tandaan niyo po, God will always be God, no matter what. Naalala ko po yung isang kwento ng apat na maliliit na bata. At hindi pa po sila nakakakita ng elephant. So the teacher would want them to know what an elephant is, pero pina-blindfold po yung apat na bata. So yung isang bata po, hawak niya yung trunk ng elephant. Yung isang bata, hawak niya yung tail ng elephant. Yung isang bata, pinahawak dun sa ears ng elephant. At yung isang bata, pinahawak dun sa legs ng elephant. So sabi ng teacher, okay, touch that part. And I want to know, I want you to describe What is an elephant? So, syempre, dahil iba-ibang hawak nila, iba-iba ang pag explain nila ng kanilang konsepto ng elepante. So, alam mo na, mahabang ganon, malapad daw, eh, malaki daw, eh, mabalahibo daw, so iba-iba. Ganyan din po sa atin. Yung nararanasan natin ay maliit na bahagi ng napakalaking Diyos. So kung yan man ay buntot, hindi yan ang kabuuan ng Diyos. Kung hindi maganda yung naging karanasan mo, it doesn't speak of who God is because God will forever be God despite and in spite the situation that you have experienced, that you are experiencing and will be able to experience. So kaya hindi tayo nakakapag-offer is because we don't know Him. And because we don't know Him that much, we don't trust Him. Trust is an essential ingredient in surrender. 
Nako, sa mga kausap ko po ngayon mga batang bata pa. I know, right? It's not for you. It's not for you. The term surrender, the term offering is not for you because you're always pushing yourself to fight, 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 win, win, win. But you know, surrender and winning is not opposite. In fact, Jesus himself said, it is in surrendering, it is in offering, it is in dying that we live. Mamaya, makikita natin kung anong ibig sabihin ng offering. Now, when we try to be God, that's the second uh, hindrance doon sa ating pagsamba. When we try to be God, we end up most like Satan who tried the same thing. So isang dahilan kaya hindi tayo nakakapag-surrender, kaya hindi tayo nakakapag-offer ng ating sarili sa pagsamba sa Diyos, hindi natin ma-offer yung mga gusto ng Diyos na tanggapin mula sa atin, is because we don't trust Him and because we are also deceived na hindi sapat si Lord, na salbahi si Lord, na ang gusto lang ni Lord e eh, puro pahirapan tayo. We have a wrong notion of who God is. Yun yung si Satan eh. He played God. Akala niya mas magaling siya kay God eh. So maaaring ganun nangyari sa atin. Kapag hindi natin pinaniniwalaan ng totoo ang Panginoon, at ang akala natin mas magaling tayo sa Kanya, we're going to be ending up to be bad, deceived, Like Satan himself. Akala ni Satan, mas magaling siya. Ayun. Akala ng maraming Kristiyano, pahirap lang si Lord, pahirap lang ang church. Gawin ko kaya ako anong gusto ko. Ayun. And I pray that it will not happen to you or to me. Definitely, kahit ano mangyari, God will always be God and we will always be people lamang po. Huwag natin siyang labanan. Instead of struggling against Him, we need to offer ourselves. We need to surrender ourselves to Him. Um, surrender, the third hindrance, is, is not a passive acceptance. It is not, okay, surrender na kay Lord, bala ka na Lord, hindi ako alam kung saan ako magtatrabaho, e, ikaw na po bahala, tas di ka nagagalaw. That is not surrender. Surrender is sacrificing our lives in resistance to evil and injustice. So, in, yung, yung surrender, hindi passive. Yung surrender, may gagawin ka. At yun, ano yun? Yung may nilalabanan ka, nilalabanan mo yung sarili mong mali. Nilalabanan mo yung hindi tama. Yung, yung pag sinabing surrender, gusto mo, wag ka na magbigay kay Lord eh. Ang gusto mo, wag ka na lang mag-worship eh. Ang gusto mo, mandaya na lang eh. Pero dahil surrender nga, at dahil worship nga, Lord, lalabanan ko tong mali. Lalabanan ko ang aking lumang pagkatao. Another thing is that surrender is suffering in order to change what needs to be changed. So, pag-surrender, hindi to para sa mahina. Yung worship, hindi para sa, walang, sa tatamad-tamad. Ang worship ay trabaho. Ang worship ay pagsasakripisyo. Para saan? Para baguhin ang dapat baguhin. Na Panginoon, hindi ko kayang baguhin ang sarili ko, but I surrender. That means I am willing to sacrifice for myself to be changed by your spirit. And you know what? The supreme example of surrender, the supreme example of worship na, na, na may relationship, na worship na may work, na worship na may mission, is Jesus Himself. In Luke chapter 22, verses 41 to 44, when He was worshiping at Gethsemane, When he was about to die, ayaw niya yun. Sino bang gustong mamatay? But he surrendered because he was worshiping the Father. At ang sabi niya, Not my will, but your will be done. That is worship. Because he trusts his Father, because he's going to do the work, 
because he is sent for a mission. Mga ka-faithful, the encounter with hope begins when we have a relationship with God and it could start now whenever we turn our everyday lives as a form of work and a form of worship and we go out and share our hope as we surrender our will to God. Tandaan ang sinabi ni Ate Mitch, hindi para sa mahina at tatamad-damad ang worship at surrender. Dahil ang totoong nag-worship, nilalabanan ang mali, nilalabanan ang dating pagkatao, nagsasakripisyo sa ngalan ng pagbabago. Sa mga sandaling susunod, we will experience singing, but the singing could be a form of worship. It depends on your attitude. Pwede mo itaas ang kamay mo, pwede mo ipikit ang mata mo, huwag mo pasinin yung mga tao sa paligid. Wala naman silang magagawa para sa'yo, pero si God meron. At hayaan mo maranasan yung inner peace. And then we'll be back for another form of worship, and that is our communion. It's been 36 colorful years that I have been worshiping the Lord corporately and personally. And I don't know how to explain it, pero parang marami pa akong hindi alam tungkol sa Kanya. Pero yung lalim ng relasyon, alam ko mas marami pang mga bagay na mangyayari sa mga susunod na araw. And today, is our time for breaking of the bread. And I need you to join with me, please, as we do this in remembrance to what the Lord has asked us to do. Ang sabi niya, it's during the first day of the week when we gather together. Yung po mga unang apostles, they're doing it whenever they have their faith groups. There, naalala na yung message kanina, they break bread in their homes. So ano po ba ang kaugnayan nito sa ating pagsamba? God is telling us that whenever we take of the bread and drink from the cup, that we remember what Jesus did on the cross, what happened to His body, and the shedding of His blood, na kung wala ang kanyang kamatayan, walang payment sa lahat ng ating kasalanan. Na isa sa pinakamasarap na naranasan ko when I attended that first worship service is when I felt the love at the same time the forgiveness of the Lord Jesus. Hindi naman ako super sama pero feeling ko at the time I was so filthy, I was so dirty and I needed the grace and the mercy of God. At ang sarap lang nung maintindihan mo kung gano'ng kakamahal ng Panginoon at ang dalawang bagay na hawa ko ay simbolo ng kanyang pag-ibig, ng kanyang katapatan sa atin. Bakit katapatan? Dahil ang sabi niya, whenever you eat of the bread and drink of the cup, you remember my covenant na isang araw, babalikan ko ang lahat nang nagtitiwala sa akin para sa isang buhay na ganap at kasiyasiya. So whenever we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we remember that Jesus died, Jesus rose again, and Jesus is coming very, very soon to save those who are His own. Tara po. Let's lift up our elements. And let's pray for healing. Let's pray for um, a surrender of hearts. Let's pray for another encounter. Sabi ko sa'yo, say no to the distractions around you. This is your divine appointment with God. Huwag kang madistract. Focus ka lang dito. Pray from the bottom of your heart. And whatever it is, whatever good thing it is that you're praying right now, I'm sure hindi ipagkakait ng Diyos sa iyo yan. 
Panginoon, salamat po sa mga simbolo ng iyong pag-ibig at katapatan. Kakainin po namin ito at iinumin habang ipinapahayag namin na hindi po namin kayang mabuhay ng wala ka. Forgive us and we receive your forgiveness, Lord. Kunin po natin ang ating mga tinapay. Let's break our bread. Lord, as we break our bread, we also break our will. Sinasabi namin na mahirap sumuko, pero sa tulong ng Spiritu mo, sinusuko po namin ang aming plano, ang aming gusto, ang aming kalooban, ang aming mga ginagawa. Let your will be done and not ours. We declare Jesus is Lord. Kainin po natin ang mga tinapay. Bless us indeed, our Jesus. Now let's lift up our cup. Sa lahat po na nananalangin ng kagalingan, pwedeng para sa iyo o para sa iyong mga mahal. Katulad ko din po, I'm also praying for my own healing. Pero wala nga pong mahirap na gawin ang Diyos sa mga taong nakasuko ang buhay sa Kanya. Panginoon, by your stripes and by your blood, we come together as a community praying for healing. Healing ng katawan namin na may mga karamdaman. Healing ng aming isip na laging nag-aalala. Healing ng aming puso na may galit pa. Yung mga sakit na nararamdaman nito. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let there be healing sa mga kaisipan namin at katawan na napapagod. As we drink of this, by faith we remember that the just shall live by faith and that there is power when we believe. Forgive us for our unbelief and let the healing flow. Jesus is our Lord, Master, and Savior. In Jesus' name, let's drink of the cup. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Marami pong salamat. This is our first week of breathing in and breathing out and having fresh dose of hope. Bless everyone who's with us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If this is your first time, welcome po to Faithful and happy anniversary sa mga kasama na po namin sa loob ng maraming taon. Mamaya po, we will be so glad to uh, pray with you at yung mga taga-outreach po, yung mga network po, sama po kayo sa amin sa breakout room. Nandyan po ang link. Don't forget, 31 days of hope, 31 different stories ng pag-asa na i-share natin sa maraming tao. Now, we can go on our mission. God bless you.